I don't want red hair. You don't like it? Okay. Well, we can always shave it off and wait for it to regrow. No! Good. Then it's settled. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Durax here. It's been forever since I've uploaded and I need some views. You know what that means. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh boy, this is my favorite part of the video. The part where Shady tells us why he chose to review this specific episode. And yes, dear viewer, you are correct to be excited for I am reviewing Pygmalion, one of, if not the most requested episodes of King of the Hill that I receive. No, seriously, everyone and their grandmother keeps hounding me about it. They're all like, Shady, you be a good boy and review Pygmalion and I'll pick you some cookies. And I'm like, how do y'all keep finding me? My grandma doesn't even know where I live. But after today, everyone's grandmas can stop bothering me and I can finally get my cookies. But Shady, this is a Halloween episode. You should be reviewing this during October. Hey, I don't tell you how to live your life. Wait, no, yes I do. All the time, actually and it's usually during a King of the Hill video. The episode starts with the Hills preparing to order at a restaurant when Peggy spots the Wang getting scolded by her boss, Bitsy. I do so know enough not to put a salad sized fork in the spoon bin. Why are you calling my niece a liar? Because the liar lied to me and I call liars liars. What's it to you? You will not use threats with her and you will not tell me how to talk to my supervisees. Oh, I felt that on a spiritual level. Stay in your ground, Bitsy. And you have just lost yourself a waitress. She quits. Well, now, wait a minute. I wasn't going to fire her. Ooh, um, yeah, okay. So, remember when I said this? I don't share the same hatred that the general fandom does when it comes to Peggy. But that doesn't mean I like literally everything Peggy does. There are moments and even entire episodes where she gets under my skin. Yeah, this is one of those episodes. Peggy is still very much funny in this episode, but throughout it, she will do things that will hit a couple of sensitive areas in my psyche. Take this scene, for example. Peggy is acting very in character here. She doesn't let others push her nor those she cares about around, which is a good quality. However, Peggy is doing this to a fault. She wants so badly to be the winner of this argument that she's ignoring everything outside of the details that make her the winner. As someone who interacts with people online on a daily basis, that hits a little close to home. But what's worse about this is that Peggy isn't the one paying the consequences of her actions. Luann is, and it's very painful to watch this young woman lose her job because her aunt has a superiority complex. Especially since in that argument, there was the possibility that Luann was in the wrong and deserved to be scolded. Unfortunately, Luann is self-doubting and very reliant on the approval of those around her. Later at the Hills house, I probably wouldn't have lost my rattlesnake's job if you hadn't said anything. Exactly, but I won't be around forever to do everything for you. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Peggy can't see that she lost that interaction because she doesn't easily acknowledge her own faults. Her delusions of grandeur have convinced her it's impossible for something bad to happen because of her. Luann lost her job because Peggy intervened, which means Luann losing her job must have been a good thing. You have to learn to help yourself. How did it help me to lose my job? It will leave you open for new opportunities. I mean, that's true, but Peggy, that's a silver lining in a gray cloud. The Learning Annex is offering a class. I signed you up. It would be really nice if sometimes you could ask me when you make decisions about my life. Another thing that hits me on a personal level. Seeking others approval is not a life I want to live, and Peggy is reminding me how much I don't like people telling me what to do. It's one of the reasons I sought out entrepreneurship. All in all, I acknowledge that Peggy making all these decisions for Luann is definitely funny. Would you like to go at seven or at nine? Seven. I'm sorry, that won't work for me. But I simply can't enjoy the jokes because of how they hit me personally. Also, that schedule says seven and 3.30. Where on earth did she get nine from? Maybe she wanted to listen to Buck Strickland talk about Sugarfoot since he's presenting at 10. So Peggy and Luann head to the Learning Annex to hear from entrepreneur Trip Larson. There he is! I've shown you guys some crazy King of the Hill characters before, but trust me, there is only one Trip Larson. Trip spots Luann in the crowd and the cinematography lets us know that he's very interested in her, so after the lecture, he decides to approach her. How'd you like my lecture? Did you enjoy it? I really like the part where you were excited about what you do. That's what I'm trying to find. A career I'm passionate about, like waitressing at a steakhouse. Uh -huh. Luann is a really good mechanic. I'm reminding you all of this because I'm pretty sure the show forgot. Something tells me I think you'd do pretty darn well in pork. Something tells me you do pretty well in the Kim Possible episode. 
Trip offers Luann a job at his company, and good gravy do I wish it was that easy to get an interview for a job. <sighs> it's all in the past, Shady. The 9 to 5 life is behind you. Back at home, the women celebrate Luann getting an interview. However, once Hank hears that the interview will take place in Tripp's house, he kicks into his voice of reason mode. Hank warns Luann about the possibility of Tripp having an alternative agenda, but he does it in a Hank way, so it's fun to watch. Sometimes men aren't interested in what they say they're interested in. You think he could be interested in something more than an interview? Oh, you mean sex? No. Yes. The pork industry is famously informal. My goodness gracious, it amazes me how Peggy can so easily make something up on the spot and at the very same time convince herself it's true. Thankfully, people who wear shades and durags don't have that problem because we are naturally likable. Is that so bad? So Luann heads down to her interview, with Peggy at her side, of course. I'm here for my interview, Mr. Larson. I am also here for her interview. Peggy? Why don't you read my autobiography? <laughs> Words cannot express how much I love that moment. Tripp not only nonchalantly ignores Peggy's want to be a part of the interview, but he makes a power play by suggesting she read his book. And the woman freaking does it! With no Peggy to interfere, Tripp and Luann begin bonding. You know so much and I know so little. I hope that doesn't make you think I'm stupid. I feel like we use the word stupid outside its intended purpose. You are not stupid. You're ignorant. Case in point. It's a compliment. That just means you haven't had the chance to learn all the wrong things. Oh. Wait, what? I can get away with insulting people if I just phrase it like a compliment? Oh, hi there. I think you're really ugly. What? It's a compliment. It just means your beauty is on a completely different level than everyone else's. Oh. M. Goodness. That's amazing. I need more. Intellectuals, I never ask you for anything other than views and money and other stuff, so you owe me. In the comments, come up with more insults phrased as compliments. Trust me, it's necessary. So Tripp's line works on Luann and they start dating. Off screen, Tripp suggests Luann change her hair to pigtails and the hills are just as disgusted as I am. It's not that we don't like your hair in braids, which we don't. It's that we don't like Trip. Hank and Peggy, concerned for Luann, go down to have a chat with Trip. Trip, however, has Hank's number. He shows off his special access to football bloopers, his experimental pig that admittedly makes my mouth water, and his hot air balloon. Hey, I don't have to tell you it's powered by propane. Well, that's one of the eight uses of propane I haven't experienced firsthand. Yipsa never goes into this, but Trip clearly did his homework on Hank. My best guess is that Luann couldn't exactly keep her mouth shut about her family. Hank takes Trip up on his offer to ride in the balloon, and Trip uses this opportunity to talk to Peggy alone. Mrs. Hill, I'm a guy who makes his own rules. Try to call your own game. Not so terrific. Whoa! Well, let me tell you something. No, Peggy, that is not the proper response. The man is holding a balloon with your husband in it and just threaten you. You either shut up or you punch him and grab the rope for yourself. Honestly, I don't like this part. I feel like the episode showed its hand way too soon. Tripp's actions here aren't ambiguous. They clearly let the audience know he's evil and unhinged. It would have been more fun to have us wondering if Peggy was right to be suspicious or if she was just being her usual overprotective self. You know, a slow burn to discovering the truth. So Peggy tries to warn her family about Tripp's threat, but none of them seem to believe her. He was pulling and yanking that cord and trying to jerk you out of there with every last fiber of his being and then some. Chip believes that no one ever solved anything with a run-on sentence. Oh, snap! Crackle Pop, an intellectual burn. Great job, Luann. That has to hurt even more given Peggy's history of being a teacher. Peggy continues arguing when suddenly there's a delivery at the door. Ah! Why on earth were the boys just standing in Hank's front yard? That headless pig is a threat. No, it's a gift from Trip Larson. There is a large dead animal on my lawn. I think the writers forgot that Peggy is also a Texan. Like I know she wasn't born in Texas, but she's used to barbecues and large dead animals. Look, let's be reasonable about this. Trip Larson works with pork. So that's why he gave us this fella here. See, this is why the pulling of the rope should have been more ambiguous, or at the very least came after this scene. Because we, the audience, saw Trip threaten Peggy with the rope and the hot air balloon, we already know he's unhinged. So we know that Peggy's right when she says the pig is a threat. But we shouldn't know that. 
We instead should be worried that she might be right. Peggy decides that enough is enough. I have decided that your boyfriend is crazy. Now, do you want to break up with him or should I? Oh, M goodness, for the love of everything that is chocolate chip flavored, will you please? Stop telling me what to do. I am a proud, ignorant woman and no one is going to change that. Luann, say that again. I am a proud, ignorant woman and no one is going to change that. That is the most beautiful thing I ever heard anyone say. Now that is the stupidest thing I ever heard anyone say. Trip eventually decides to have Luann move in with him, and as Luann's stuff gets moved into the house, the camera pans over showing pigs being led to the slaughter, almost like it's trying to symbolize something. While Trip brought most of Luann's stuff to her room, he had her clothes shredded, forcing her to wear outfits he's picked out for her. But they're all the same. Everything has a small flaw. Or imperfection. Drives me mad. Ow. I'll have Blanca bring you up a warm glass of milk, okay? Finish it all. Ow! My head is bleeding! I took the liberty of dying it while you were asleep these last 14 hours. Ha ha! I don't like this joke. With all the red flags being thrown around, Luann finally starts thinking that maybe something's not right about Trip. She sneaks into his personal study and finds an open book with an eerily similar picture. <gasps> it's me. Except for the teeth. <laughs> wow, I've seen this episode before and that still nearly gave me a heart attack. Trip reveals his insane plan. I never thought I'd meet someone as perfect as the woman in that picture. And then I saw you. Are you trying to turn me into her? <gasps> the horror! I can't believe Trip would do something like this, and I definitely wouldn't if I were in his shoes and Luann looked like Nessa from Pokemon. This is crazy! Luann laments to Trip that she can accept this, but she's really scared because she's all alone. Trip decides throwing a Halloween party would be the best way to fix that. Kind of shocking, actually. You'd think Trip would want to keep Luann away from other people, given what's going on, but we gotta find some way to get Peggy back into the story, I guess. Speaking of which, Peggy and Hank get invited to the Halloween party, and Hank continues to prove how amazing of a character he is. I can't enjoy a party until I know where the bathroom is. You knew that when you married me. Trip requests Luann's presence to reveal his costume to her. Of course, since she's the girl in the picture, Trip naturally dresses up as... I'm here, dearest. <gasps> Luann. You've never looked more beautiful. A devil pig. Okay, let's see where this goes. <gasps> Is that an engagement ring? Luann, will you do me the great honor of marrying him? That's the man in the ad. What? We can be the family in the picture. You, him, and me. <laughs> What is going on? How did we get here? What does any of this have to do with Peggy overreaching in Luann's life? Luann decides to run away from Trip and get help from all the people there at his part or she runs right through it. And I guess that works too. When Peggy finds out Luann fled from Trip, she joins him in chasing her niece to one of the factories. Uh, excuse me, animators. How the crap did Luann push what is clearly a pull door? Trip is able to make his way inside and get a hold of Luann, but for some odd reason, Luann just refuses to see things his way. I'm calling the police! Luann, you're not thinking clearly. Peggy intervenes and makes things ten times worse, activating the slaughter part of the slaughterhouse. This is perfect! Now we can become Larson Pork products together! <laughs> Luann! <laughs> Mama! Papa! I'm coming home! Now, as is, this would be a pretty dark and gruesome ending, but it isn't necessarily funny. And at the end of the day, the writers of King of the Hill obviously love to tell jokes. How can one make this dark ending funny? Oh my god. I can suddenly think clearly. What am I doing on a pig costume? Uh oh. That's messed up. 
Like, I know I'm usually the first person to laugh at mean jokes, but I genuinely couldn't enjoy that. It felt like a completely different character getting punished for something someone else did. Luann and Peggy have a final conversation. Peggy tries to tell Luann that she's her own woman, but it honestly just comes across like Peggy is making up stuff. But you handled the situation very well. <laughs> the crap she did! Luann ran through a crowded party and didn't think to tell anyone what was going on. Only once again when she was alone with a man she knew was a psychopath does she announce to him that she's calling the police, which unsurprisingly made him more unhinged. And then she made the ingenious move of hopping onto a moving conveyor belt, which almost got her killed. Exactly what part of that was handling the situation well? The episode ends on the shot of Peggy and Luann with hooks in the foreground, and I know many of you want me to talk about the supposedly altered scene. However, a YouTuber by the name of Media Memento says there's no such thing. And because I'm too lazy to do my own research, I choose to believe him. And that was Peggy. Pygmalion, King of the Hill's darkest episode. I like this episode mainly because of Trip and Luann. Everything they say and do here is a riot. However, the episode had a lot of jokes that were tailored against my specific tastes. Not that they were bad, just that I personally couldn't enjoy them. Also, when you look at it objectively, everything in this is structured pretty horribly. The main problem of the episode, which is the relationship between Luann and Peggy, gets almost completely dropped once Luann moves in with Trip. At the end, they try to bring it back with Luann's supposed learning a lesson, but none of the things they say happen, happened. Also, Peggy was the one who was supposed to be learning the lesson to let Luann make her own decisions, but literally nothing changes about her. She freaking ends the episode telling Luann what she should take from this experience. It feels like the writers wanted to make a story about Luann and Peggy, but they had too much fun writing about Trip and put more focus on him than they should have. But hey, no one watches this episode for the heartwarming lesson, right? They watch it so they can see a crazy man whose dream is to bring his wife to life and marry someone else, dress up as a pig, and gladly turn himself into a sausage. And really, what more do you need? This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. Happy to say. Goodbye. <laughs>